What's up everyone, Amy here. Now Groove Pages has made so many updates throughout the last year and a lot has changed. So in this video, I wanna give you 20 Groove Pages tips and tricks for beginners and it might even help you if you've been using Groove Pages for a while. I'm going to leave timestamps in the description area just in case you wanna jump ahead to a specific tip. You ready? Let's go. Tip number one, adding spacing to all devices. Let's say for this particular heading, you want to increase the bottom margin. You'll click on the element, click on the pencil icon, and before you scroll down to spacing over here to edit the bottom margin, you would scroll back up and under toggle space cascading, toggle that over to the right. Then you can head down and increase the margin to 4.5. What this means is that once you have that toggle over to the right, that margin of 4.5 is now applied to all devices as you can see here. And the same applies to any elements that you want to add spacing or margin to. Let's use this button for example. If you click on that, click on the pencil icon and as long as this toggle space cascading is on, you can go to spacing. Let's add a left and right padding of three. You can see that the three padding is applied across all devices for this particular button. Tip number two, using breadcrumbs to navigate to each element. If I scroll down here, what I've done is dragged in two columns and added a text inside the first column. If you click on the text heading, you can see in the breadcrumb here, each breadcrumb is a link and it's clickable. But let me explain. The text is inside the first container it's in two columns and the two columns is inside a container and the block is holding that container. Now let's just go down here and duplicate this image. Then we're gonna drag in the first column. If I click on the image and I want to quickly add some padding inside the container, I can just click on the container here, click on the pencil icon, go down to spacing, and apply a padding all inside the container. And it's just a quick way of navigating to each element using the breadcrumb. Tip number three, centering an image or text inside of a column. Let's click on this image and just decreasing the size, the image has shifted over to the left. If you want to center an image or a heading, you always need to be on the container level. And that's where the breadcrumb comes in handy. You click here to be in the container. You can see the whole container has a red outline around it. Once you're in the container level, you can then go to layout, click on vertical, this, and this, and that's gonna center the image and heading inside of this container. Tip number four, adding a clickable phone number or email address. Let's say you want to change this button to a phone number. Click on the pencil icon. Over in configure, you will enter in the phone number. Click on the drop down arrow. Make sure it's on URL. For the URL, you will type in TLE dot dot and the phone number. Click on update. And if someone clicks on this phone number, they'll be able to call directly from their mobile. You can also change the button to an email address. Under text, you would enter in the email address here. It still will be linked to URL. Under URL, it will be mail to dot dot. Enter in whichever email address you want to link to. Press update and the button will now be clickable to open up to an email client. Tip number five, changing the background input label for opt-in forms or changing the color of an input label. Head to elements. In this example, I'm going to use active campaign. Let's just drag it over here. In order to change the input label background, you will click on the label here, click on the pencil icon, head over to background. You can change it to this light gray. You can also click on the label, pencil icon over in text, decrease that size and change the button color by clicking on that background and let's change it to green. I can head back to text and you can change that to black. Tip number six, changing an icon by typing in the word. For example, I went to elements, scroll down under media, you can drag in the icon over here. If I click on this, Click on the pencil icon. In configure, instead of scrolling down and searching, you can type in Facebook, click on it, give it some time to load, click on update, 
And since it's yellow, go to design under text and change it to a blue. Tip number seven, changing the text color for a specific word in a heading or a sentence. For example, for home selection, let's say you want home to be in yellow, but you want selection to be in white. You would highlight the home, that will pop up. Click on this A, and now you have a selection of colors to choose from. The same applies to paragraph. If you highlight the text, wait until this toolbar pops up, click on this. Now you can choose whichever color you like, and that has turned into green. Tip number eight, saving blocks for reuse into their own categories. Let's say you're designing this block here and you really like the look of it you would click on the block in the breadcrumb and you see this star here click on it you can create a new category call this whatever random name you want and then just click create this content save will appear and now when you go to blocks scroll down and the word random block you will see the block that you just saved right here and if you wanted to delete it click on delete and press confirm. Tip number nine, saving a page template for reuse. I made a video on how to move your pages to the funnels tab by saving a template. So I'm going to leave a link in the description area for you to check out that video as it goes through the same process. Tip number 10, inversing an image and text on a mobile. Let's say you have a block with two columns. You have the image in the left column and the text over in the right column. And you like to inverse the image and text when viewing it on a mobile. You'll need some CSS code. What you will do is paste this code into the page that you like to inverse the image. Let's head to pages and we want to inverse the image on the home page. Click on three dots edit settings, scroll down to custom CSS, and you want to paste in this code here, right underneath all the existing code. So I'm just gonna scroll down, paste in this code right underneath here, hit the check icon, close out of this. Step two is selecting the layout 2-2 in the breadcrumb. We need to click on the element first, and it's in the layout 2-2. Once you've found layout 2-2, which is really important, head over here, click on the pencil, scroll down right to custom attributes, and you want to type in inverse column. Once you've done that, close out of it, press save. Let's click on the preview, and it was this column that we wanted to inverse. Once you shrink the screen size, you can see that the text that was on the right and the image is on the left is now inverse. Tip number 11, changing the text element to H1, H2, H3, or a paragraph. Let's click on this heading over here, pencil icon. Over on the right, you will see that it's a H1 tag. Now let's click on the heading again, highlight it all. Under heading over here, if you click on the drop down, you have the option of selecting heading two, heading three, four, or normal. If I click on heading two, it's now changed to heading two. And when you click on the pencil icon again, it's labeled as a H2 tag. The same can be applied to a paragraph. If I change it to normal, this is now converted to a paragraph. You can see here that it's changed to a P tag. By the way, guys, if you're enjoying this video, I really appreciate it if you could hit on that like button for me. Tip number 12, using mockups for showcasing digital products. In elements, scroll down to devices. You have mockups for desktop, laptop, tablet, phone, etc. You can either drag in an existing element like the desktop, click on the pencil, configure, and upload an image. Press select and update. However, if you like more realistic looking mockups, you can go to mockupphone.com, select a specific device, and there's a bunch of different device mockups that you can choose from. I'm going to choose iPad, click on pick it. It will give you a recommended image size here. So you just browse file, click on the image you like to upload, click generate product mockups. The software will generate a high quality image of different mockups for free for you. You can click download my mockups and you can upload any of these mockups into Groove Pages. So that's just another way of creating mockups that look just a bit more professional. Tip number 13, adding an animation to an element. Did you know that you have a bunch of animations available in Groove Pages? If I click on this button, 
click on the pencil, click on animation. Under animation here, if you click on the drop down, you see a bunch of available animations. And this is really good for call to action buttons when you just wanna add a little bit of emphasis to that button. Under animation, let's click on pulse and you want that animation to be on when someone hovers over the button. When we preview it, you can see that when I hover over it, it pulses. So that's a really nice effect on a call to action button. Tip number 14, drag handles to resize elements. In order for drag handles to appear, you need to click on the element. Say we want to resize this image. Always click on the pencil icon. Once you click on the pencil icon, you'll see these drag handles appear on each corner of the image and that's when you can drag it in, out or drag it up or down. So if you're in any element and you notice that the drag handle hasn't appeared, you just need to click on the pencil icon and these drag handles will appear for you. Tip number 15, tools when you're funnel hacking. There are two tools that I use frequently when I'm looking at a landing page to design or model. The first tool is What Font Chrome Extension. I'll leave a link in the description and Color Pick Eyedropper. Once you've added these extensions, let's open up Groove.cm's website. And if you click on the What Font over on the top here, and if I click on the heading, you'll see that the font type is Nonito Sans. It's a size of 72 pixels, height of 72 pixels, and they provide the hex code to the font color here as well. Just click on the Chrome extension again to deactivate it. Now let's say you like this pink color over here. Click on the color picker, move over here, click on it again. It will snap that color and you can see it's EE6180. That will give you the color code to use on Groove pages. Tip number 16, adding an audio file in Groove Pages. And what you will do is head to Groove Member first, under Contents, Files, click on Upload File, give it a name, select the file. I'll select this, click Open, Upload File. Once the file's uploaded, you want to click on Actions, Copy URL, open up a notepad, paste that in, head back to Groove Pages, click on Element, Scroll down and look for the code embed element, drag it in. Now you want to click on this cog wheel and you need to paste this code in. So I'll provide this code in the description area. And what we want to do is paste in this URL section, paste it in there, copy all of this, head back to Groove Pages in the edit source code, paste it in, press save, Click on the preview and you can see that the audio file is now available here. Tip number 17, if your email marketing integration is not listed, use the code embed element. So you will drag in the code embed element again from here, drag it into there. And let's say that you're using Mailite, you clicked on my integrations, clicked on add, and there's no integration for MailLite. So what you would do is you head to MailLite, locate the form, choose the embed form into your website, copy that, head back to group pages, click on the cogwheel, paste it in, press save, and you can see it appearing. A tip here is to choose the right font size so that it matches your page design before embedding the form. Tip number 18, using global styles to reuse an element style or formatting. Let's say you like this button color and formatting. So you would click on this, click pencil, head down to global style, click on the drop down, create a new style. We'll call this red button. Click on the check icon. Let's drag in solid button element over here. As you can see here, it's pretty plain. So let's click on pencil. Locate global style, click on the drop down and click red button. And now we were able to reuse the same element style. Tip number 19, hiding blocks or elements on a mobile. For example, if you like to hide this block on the mobile, you will click on mobile view. This is the block that we want to hide. Click on pencil under single screen override mode, toggle it to the right making sure that we're still in the block that we like to hide. Scroll down under layout, instead of display, click on the drop down arrow and locate none. 
This is now grayed out on mobile view, but on the desktop view, it's still available for viewing. Tip number 20, sharing your funnels when performing client work. If you're designing funnels or websites for someone and they're not comfortable sharing their logins with you, just keep designing your website or funnel in Groove Pages. Once you've saved everything, click on the hamburger icon, share site, click add, copy that link, and then you can share it with your clients and they can have the design imported into their Groove Pages. All right, guys, if you have any tips or tricks on Groove Pages, please share them in the comments area below. If you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, and until next time, see ya.